All right. Good evening, everybody. Welcome to the War Games Podcast number 43, I think we're at now. Uh, so, tonight's a special night. As you can see in the title, we're going to be talking about uh, Cyberpunk 2077, a uh, game that got even more hype around it uh, this week, uh, including a fuck ton of hype from me, because I'm excited as a motherfucker for this thing. Uh, so, what we're going to be doing tonight is... A uh, few of us are set up on Watch Together, and we are going to watch the gameplay uh, trailer, walkthrough, reveal, whatever you want to call it. Uh, all of us are going to watch it together, and while we're sitting here watching it, we'll you know kind of talk about it and so on. Uh, now, joining me tonight, the lobster has made his return. The working man uh, <laughs> came home and uh, is set up, ready to go for the podcast. Now, also, Extra Region is special today. Today is the lobster's birthday. Yeah. Happy birthday, lobster. Yeah. How old are you now? 31. 31. Look at that. Little guy's all grown up. Uh, also with us tonight yeah. is uh, is Queen Lobster herself. And uh, also, the Cope, uh, who also just did a 14-month uh, resub. What is that, brother man? Uh, not much. How's it going, guys? Oh, living the dream. Living the dream. Now, I know, uh, well, I guess I don't know necessarily how excited uh, Lobster and Cope you guys are for this. I know myself and Rain, for which for those of you guys that don't know, Rain is Mrs. Lobster. Uh, I know me and her are super fucking excited for this. Uh, what about the two of you? Like, what are, are both of you interested in this? Don't give a fuck what? I don't know. Um, may, how, how, how about this, Brewer? I understand that these are the guys that made The Witcher, right? Yes. Okay, I've never played The Witcher. I think I own Witcher 2 and Witcher 3, but I've never actually played them. If you were to... If you were to... Uh, if I were to... Uh, if you were to explain to me, like, okay, so is The Witcher, is it like Fallout? Like, what are we looking at here? Uh, kind of. It was what Fallout could have been if they had better writers, if that makes any sense. Okay, now, so is that what this game is? It's like yeah. The Witcher, but it's in the future, and it's all, like, cyberpunk? Yeah, exactly. And okay, from... so it's like, like, uh, like Shadowrun kind of thing. Yeah, it's very, very... Like, you can see a lot of influence from Shadowrun, for sure. A lot of influence, even though this technically is based on something long before Shadowrun, this is actually based on a board game, a tabletop game from like 80 or 83 or something like that is when the guy first invented it. Um, and the guy that actually invented the the board game is working with CD Projekt to make this game. He's helping them actually write this game and so on. Um, and apparently the dude's been shooting down game developers for like 17 years or some shit. Guys have been coming to him wanting to make this game, wanting to make this game, and he kept telling them no, 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 no. And finally, CD Projekt Red came to him and he said yes. They were the first, pe first people uh, that he said they felt like they had the, uh, they were genuine enough and wanted to stick to the kind of mythos of the story enough that he said yes. Plus the fact that they were like, we want this to be as authentic as possible, so we would actually like to hire you to write the game. Okay. Okay. So, um, are we talking just strictly like this is like no, no, like there's no confusion or anything about it. This is going to be an RPG or is it like an action RPG or. Yeah, it's definitely an action RPG. It's first person, which a lot of people are not happy about at all is considering the Witcher series has always been third person. Um, but it's first person action RPG consequences matter, uh, you know, story centric, you know, whatever other fucking tags you want to give it. There's a sure. point in this, basically what we're going to watch here, the gameplay takes us through basically one story or one quest, one complete quest line. It takes us through. And by the end of it, they mention that, you know, this entire quest line came from a single decision, one okay. decision of many that you could have made. And this is one example of thousands of situations that could happen. So, okay, so um, I, that sounds really cool to me. Um, I guess, uh, like for me, it's always been tricky because I was never, I mean, I think I've explained it to you in the past. I wasn't really, I wasn't raised on RPGs. 
-hmm. Like, uh, despite, you know, I grew up at, when I was a kid, obviously we had, uh, I, think, I think our first console was like an NES. So I grew up, you know, playing platformers and right. um, uh, RPGs never really, I played the first Final Fantasy, but that's really all I ever experienced. And then I went to a Genesis and then the Genesis was all, it was more platformers. And then once I was a little bit more mature um, and we got a PS1, that was it for me. I just, I was like, strictly like survival horror, uh, like, just that I fell deep into that hole. Uh, survival horror, 3D platformers, like Crash Bandicoot, Resident Evil, all that shit. And so I kind of completely missed the entire RPG. The closest thing I ever came to an RPG was, like, Zelda. And Zelda's not really an RPG. It's like an adventure game. It's like an action well, adventure. The know. reason, the reason, honestly, that I think you would get into this, one, the story is just... I'm sure going to be absolutely amazing. These guys do great writing. I mean, The Witcher 3, the story of it and the writing of it is the best game I've ever played. Um, two, and this is a very good thing, is the combat in this looks amazing because it is a shooter. It's not, you know, melee combat like Witcher, the Witcher series and it's first person. And depending upon what style of, you know, whether you, you know, use a melee class or a hybrid or a shooter or whatever, some of the combat is very fast paced, very reminiscent of Doom 2016. Very, very much so reminiscent oh. of that. So, so less like not like less fallout, like you're not pausing the action to. Like, no, no, you're not. Figure out what body part. No, you no. Okay. It does have like slow down shit like that. Like there's, I guess, certain implants or something like that where you can kind of slow things down and stuff like that. But then it speeds back up to normal right. time. Uh, and, but it is fairly fast paced combat. Sure. I have, you know, I have, you know, I think the closest I ever came to any kind of like cyberpunk, like this kind of futuristic setting kind of thing was when I, you know, when I was a kid. We had a P we, we my dad had a PC, so I played PC games. And one of the first PC games I ever played was Syndicate, and like that's what you know that's what that whole thing is. It's mm -hmm. in the future. You got it's a, there's a lot of cyberpunk stuff, and well, you know there wasn't a word for it yet. But a lot of people are likening this to Deus Ex and what Deus okay. Ex w really wanted to be, but yeah. wasn't capable of because the hardware just didn't exist at the time. Um, now I watched this reveal live uh i actually happen to be watching co uh co carnage uh and for anybody that doesn't know how this went down basically cd project red started up a stream on twitch super early in the morning it was like fucking 5 6 a.m and i happened to see it and i was like what the fuck is this so i click on there and it's just code running on a black background like 8-bit 80s looking code running line yeah. after line after line after line on this black background i was like okay so they're gonna be you know showing us something eventually so i hung out for a little bit and of course chat's just going full fucking retard mode and i was like all right well whatever i'll end up seeing what it is and eventually went off did you know whatever shit i had to do and then co went live at 8 a.m as he does every morning so i hopped in there i was watching co stream for a while you know, doing some shit around the house and then came back and sat down and then this gameplay trailer came on just out of nowhere. After nine hours of them streaming this black screen with white code running on it. So they ran this stream for nine hours and then boom, this gameplay trailer comes on out of nowhere. And that gameplay trailer hit and like the big streamers all like immediately turned on their streams and started, you know, watching it with their communities and Kobe being uh, one of them who w was already live, but he uh, he started watching it live with his community, which was a really cool thing to do. Uh, and there was hundreds of thousands of people between all the channels watching this gameplay reveal. Uh, so it's pretty safe to say the fucking hype train is like full ahead. Um, so I mean, what do you guys think? You think we should... Uh, Think we should fire this thing up and start watching it see what this shit looks like fuck yeah <laughs> yeah yeah all right let's do it lost earths go ahead and hit play here go Welcome to the gameplay demo walkthrough of CD Projekt Red's upcoming title, Cyberpunk 2077. 
a narrative-driven, open-world RPG set in a dark version of the future. Before we start, a small but important disclaimer. The gameplay you're about to see is from a work-in-progress version of the game. Everything you see is potentially subject to change. And guys, I will warn you, we will be, you know, talking over this, so just keep yeah. that in mind. Aw, oh, I didn't get to see no virtual this titties demo, yet. We're going to play a female. Keep in mind that what you see here is not final. We just want to give you a glimpse of what will be possible in the released game. This is an RPG, so before we get into our appearance, we need to define our backstory. What you choose here will unlock different possibilities later in the game. Also, you can use an array of different options to modify how you look. These include body type, hairstyle, tattoos, makeup, skin tone, and many, many more. But visuals aren't everything. You'll also be able to customize your initial attribute setup. You'll notice we didn't pick a class. Cyberpunk 2077 features a fluid class system, and you'll be able to modify your class throughout the game. Okay, this it's like the job system place in Final near Fantasy the beginning III. of the game. V and her friend Jackie, along with a netrunner named Tiba, are hired to find and retrieve a missing person, a girl whose locator implant went dark. It's clear. Go. Look at this, dude. I can't imagine what this gonna what this is gonna look like when it's finished. I mean, look at the lighting and just the graphics of it. Jesus. This enables us to maximize your immersion. Should have full access in 2.8 seconds. Breached it. Your turn. What I live, the way I know. Alarm neutralized. Bro, let me ask you a question. Mm-hmm. So, as beautiful, ah, oh, fuck. As beautiful as this looks, um. Being that you are like this huge CD Projekt Red whore, and you don't have any shame at admitting that, mm -hmm. um, are they have they been known to like? Is this going to be a rep like visually? Is this what the game is going to look like? Like this? Oh pretty? yeah, They're it'll probably to, like, it'll probably be you? even better. Okay. Okay, I was just curious if they're in the practice of uh, showing one thing and then. Oh you know, no! You. Yeah, they don't do the whole you know bait and switch type shit. At least not from what I've ever seen. Okay. All right. Hello. Hey, there she is. We, st we started without you. <laughs> oh no. Target V. Who's too simple? Not our girl. I see how it is. Keep looking. I can click on the watch to get a link. Are huh? kidnapping people to harvest their implants. Okay, things are about to get heated. We'll take a reflex. Did you just fire underwater to allow your shot? Yep. The Kresnikov ability. I've never seen that done before in a video game. I'm hoping that you can get like this upgrades for this Kresnikov. pistol and kind of make it like uh kind of like the Lawbringer. Where you can have multiple yeah, types of yeah, ammunition, yeah, yeah. you know, which I'm I'm guessing you probably can. You see that pillar? Destructible environments. Yeah, 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 yeah. He's moving. Cover, fight cover. It's like they played fear and they're like, we're going to make that better. Yeah. <laughs> I'm getting a huge fear vibe from this. Yeah, yeah, it, it does. Got none to fucking you. Can you see it, huh? Sure hope our target's in there. Yeah. The only downside is you can tell this guy's playing on a controller, so it looks kind of me. Boobies! Got our target. We make it, she alive? This does not look good. 
No in a minute. Jacking into Biomon. No in a minute. Jacking into Biomon. Did you just rewind so you could see her titties better? Sandra Dorset NC5704-42. Got a winner. Well, she will be if we can get her to a hospital. Sheesh. Trauma Team Platinum, too. Platinum? Shit. TT should have swooped in if she sneezed. Something's jamming the Biomon signal. Talk to me, T-Bug. Virus, probably. Locate her neurosocket. Should be a shard spotted in. Shit's probably on that. If we clear it, free up the signal, TT could actually drop in. This shit also reminds me a lot of uh, Ghost in the Shell. Got the shard. Removing it now. Done. Greetings, Sandra. An emergency evacuation unit has been dispatched and is due to arrive at your location in 180 seconds. Biomon claims trauma will be here in three minutes. Like the fucking cavalry. <laughs> Let's get her out of here. Your premium plan will cover 90% of the projected cost of your rest. <laughs> oh, mierda, she's flatlining! V, you need to know what's going on. Jackie, air hypo. Can't China. Adrenaline to the heart, straight out of Pulp Fiction. Oh, well, China. Get her outside. I'll cover you. It turns out a virus disrupted the girl's locator implant. We fixed that, and now help is inbound. Swarm of the sons of bitches. Two vans full just pulled up outside. Fuera, get her out. Terrorists. God damn. It's like fucking Blade Runner the game. Stop where you are. Place the patient on the stretcher. That's a pretty badass stretcher. The EMTs carry guns now? Well they're the trauma team, so. I said step they back. They fix trauma, they cause trauma, you know. NC five seven zero four four two secured. Stimulants being administered, seventy milligrams dopamine, one hundred and ten norepinephrine, eight hundred vibrant. They actually move pretty smooth too. Tactical is a motherfucker. No problem. Cutting connection. T bug out. These guys are like fucking para rescue. All clear. That was trauma team, a kind of high-end premium medical insurance. Don't have much time from what Bug said. We've delivered the target, and T-Bug has notified us that the scavengers have called in reinforcements. Let's get out of here before they arrive. I got the eddies for new wheels now. I had something real fine, too. How about you, Aina? Probably blowing all on booze in three days. Talking about somebody else, Jack. Than a I think the hair still looks a little... meh. At least for that model. Yeah. But I'm assuming that's something they're gonna square away, because like the hair in Witcher 3 looked better than that. So, this game isn't gonna be shy about nudity then? Is no, <laughs> no, they've never... No. This has always been a mature Cyberpunk game. Is a mature, visceral oh, see, there you oh, go. There you go, yeah. <laughs> yeah, they've, uh, they've never shied away from that. With the game world. And as you just saw, it's people. Hello, Night City. You may have seen here with us teaching on all last night's beer. My first member, the man, the myth, Johnny Silverhand. But this apartment looks so much like fucking Fifth Element apartment. Yeah, it does. Yeah. For a day. Yeah. <laughs> or at least the kitchen does. I guess the rest of it doesn't, but the kitchen does. Hey, Sophie. Look, I need to talk to you. That noise is as big as my balls. And I got a hot date with my Ripper Doc. Come on, I now make the dock wait. Pull some pants on your culo and get down here. Subway entrance to win your iron. Okay, Jackie has just told us that he has some big news for us. And we have an appointment with our Ripper Doc today. Before we leave, let's take a good look around. The radio actually sounds pretty good, too. Like the directional good audio from it. Night City. The song on the radio is by rocker boy Johnny Silver. It's part of our creative process to draw inspiration from the pen and paper system created by Mike Pondsmith and to put our own 2077 spin on it. 
Let's go grab our gear. No, oh, that's a fucking gun room. That's an armory, yeah. <laughs> Take this trusty pistol. I'm sure as you, you know, go through the game and collect shit, it'll, you know, fill in and those also grab our spaces. Since Cyberpunk 2077 is an RPG, the jacket not only provides us with protective stats like armor, but it also increases our street cred. Street cred is a form of experience the player acquires by completing side missions. It is used to unlock new vendors and content throughout Night City. Yeah, there were also slots for All swords right. in there as well, Let's yeah. Let's go meet Jack. V's current apartment is located inside a mega building, a huge building complex that forms a micro society. It's part of, of, it's it's part of Mega in City One. Line, technology yeah, in the world would, have evolved yeah. in some ways that <laughs> seem trees. familiar, when but entirely surprising in others. As an example, I mean, you can definitely see the influences from slang. A lot of things. Oh yeah, we there. make sure to oh, yeah. every Blade Runner, Judge Dredd, fucking. Um, so everything has its purpose and stays believable. Um, like Sh Shadow Run. A big part of our RPG experience is having a world that is interactive. Here, a generic ad has morphed into an advertisement specifically tailored to V, informing her of the nearest vendor she can purchase the product. In this case, it shows us where to find some Nicola soda. So this part, I'm getting like a big Fallout vibe from. Mm -hmm. Like all of the stuff on the screen, oh, all the people. Nicola, I read it as Nicola. Gun vendor. This is Wilson. One of Night City's many gunsmiths. We won't be checking his wares today, but you can purchase and upgrade your weapons and gear throughout the city. So in the future, Cyberpunk like, 2077 the Second is Amendment is just, Night no one fucks with it, apparently. Yeah. <laughs> metropolis located on the coast of the free state of North California. It's a dystopian city where violence and oppression... Oh, you definitely know it's the future, because it's California. Hard they got Night guns city. everywhere. Fully realized, yeah. seamless open world with no loading screens. Currently, we're in Watson, a former industrial. Did you hear that? Where no loading no screens. With money. Yeah. You me? Although, I mean, there's ways around that. Like that elevator ride was like a loading screen, mm -hmm. basically. Now give me back my Eddie. Look at all the fucking people, all the shit they have on screen. We've greatly enhanced our crowd and community system to create the most believable city in any open world game to date. The city streets are bustling with crowds. Could you imagine if we could have a city like this in Arma? All living their lives. Like just this many people in it? And a stable frame rate. <laughs> yeah. That's the thing is, this looks like it's it run. It's running really fucking smooth. Obviously, we don't know what they're running it on, and you know this is not anywhere near done. But like, it looks okay, pretty goddamn smooth. Jack. Right. And this could just very well be, you know, this is obviously like a, a small demo, like a small chunk of the game. Shit's happening. What's up, Jack? Dexter Deshaun. Huh? So familiar? Who wants to talk to you? What a nice city's top face these days. Okay, you see that caddy? Need to walk on over there and get us a job, I know. Yeah, that's a caddy. Yeah, that's unmistakably a Cadillac, man. Fine, I'll meet him. Talk. I wonder Is how it? much they had to pay Cadillac to say caddy. Yeah, yeah. Good luck. It turns out we've caught the attention of one of Night City's biggest players, Dexter Deshaun, a fixer, a person who gets things done. He wants to meet up and discuss a job. Get in. Let's see what he. In the future, the doors open the old ways, the way they used yeah, to. Yeah, suicide doors. Yeah. Yo, Miss V, a pleasure. Oh, it's Rick Ross. Yeah, it's what a lot of people <laughs> were saying. 
but you can see like in this like you can see they still have work to do on like textures and stuff a lot of the well not yeah. a lot but some of the textures still look kind of flat you know his, look at his hair is like flopping around yeah with Yeah, you mean how much the Cadillac pay them? Yeah. Interested, sure. Tell me more. Well, glad to hear. Before we can start in on this, though, I need to be sure. Sure you all right. All right. And the nature of this test? The volume's a little low on this. I'm going to turn it up for you guys here. See, got a classic tale for you. Psycho gang, just doing his thing, jumped a corp convoy, got away with gear. Now I need me that little combat vibe. They call it the flathead. Of course, I got the eddies to buy it, but me and the Maelstrom boys ain't the best of friends. No flow to our convo, see? Who's the woman? Corporal agent. She's on the hunt for the dogs who sold the Gangoon Jinfo on the convoy. Got herself a prisoner. Her chief suspect, most likely. Going on 20 hours since the convoy was jumped and she... The smoke from his cigar was kind of weird, too. Mm-hmm. Gotta be desperate by now. Yeah, they need to, like, I think it would be badass if they, have the, if they were to crack the window and you could see the smoke flowing out the window. Nobody's gonna smoke a fucking cigar <laughs> like that with the car just closed up. You're gonna fucking so, your eyes are gonna be burning in seconds. Do good, and this will be the start of a beautiful friendship. Uh, Slender King, this is the gameplay reveal for Cyberpunk 2077. It seems Dexter has given us a test of sorts to see if we're worthy. He wants us to retrieve a piece of high-tech combat gear a local gang stole from the Militech Megacorp. So what's Eddie? Did you, did you we'll find out what Eddie's is for this him? job? Eddie's is the currency. Angles. Yeah. Let's try calling the Militech contact to see where that leads. I'm always a sucker for the, the lingo for mm. the for these kind of uh, for this kind of medium. Hi. Um. Heard you were looking for some tech. Let's talk. Hey, everybody, shut it! Where is it? Come on, spill. On the horn? No. Amateur hour. First exit off Skyline going towards the NID. Storm Channel under the overpass. Meet you there. The situation's tricky because the contract giver is a corporate agent who seems a little high strung. Before we get down to business, it's a great idea to visit our Ripper dock. This is where it starts getting really fucking gnarly. Look at this fucking environment, though, man. Yeah, it's like a fucking bazaar. It's like Chinatown. Yeah, it's so fucking impressive. This looks like downtown Buffalo, like on a farmer's market. Like, there's like always like one cop on the corner, like just right. one or two, you know, like just making sure no one's selling cigarettes or getting a mug at anybody. Crime is a common occurrence. Night City is not a safe place. Life here is not easy. Like the division. Yeah. Your heart chakra looks a little out of whack, babe. V! I can relieve... How'd it play out with Dex? It's all here. All right. I'll check it out while I wait for you. V? Dr. Vector, we'll see you now. She looks almost identical to the chick from Blade Runner. Ripper Docs are specialist in the first one. who offer people the possibility to install or upgrade their cyberware. Vicky, as dry as ever, you old ripper. Hey, V. Thanks. In the upper hand pretty darn quickly. Need to bump up my specs and get a grip. <laughs> really? Now? Finally? Vic, shit just got real. In the major leagues. Got a job from Dex to Sean. V. Dex to Deshaun? Yeah, that is something. But let me guess. Hasn't paid you yet. Quit crying, Vic. I'll bring you the Eddies later. With interest. You know I will. Last time, I swear. Now sit. 
You know, another thing that kind of that I noticed is their tattoo work is really good. Like this guy's shit, you can tell That's some of his old stuff. You can see that it's sun faded. It it's got fucking some blown out lines. Now jack in. Like most games, when they do tattoos, they just look like they, you know, they're brand fucking new. They never you look like, you know, they're like lived in or anything. We're going to install both an optical scanner. Mark one, like I said, decent enough scanner. Displays data on your cornea. And a subdermal weapon grip. The link's not labeled. And to be perfectly honest, not entirely sure where the hell I got it. Still, looks like it'll talk to Kiroshi Tech. See, so these fucking implants that you can get, like, increase your stats on shit. Carve away. Right, that makes sense. Okay. This is kind of like where I kind of tune out in RPGs, stuff. though. It's it's really hard for me to, like, commit to, like, a like a class or, like, what I want to do. Like, it's, that's one of the reasons why I tune out on Fallout so much. Mm. It's like, because Fallout is pretty bare bones when it comes to stats. But even that's, like, I don't care how, high, like, my charisma, I don't, I don't care. Right. I just want to like kill oh, things God. and have fun. Play by play makes you sound like a dentist. You're always going on and on. You don't be me now. Remember, I'm old. I got a shaky gigantic hand. Could slip. Lights out for a minute. All right. So fucking creepy. Good. So let's test it. Linking you in. Took her eye out. I feel yeah. a little discomfort. Maybe blurred vision, low contrast, glitches. No, that's not Lance Hendrickson. I wish it was. Yeah, that, you know that voice immediately. Yeah. Now, the last thing I seen him in was uh, Detroit Become Human. With the and they actually scanner, used his voice and his face for that. Take a closer look. Those are the arm blades from the first little teaser thing. This is fantastic. Beautiful. Time for the scanner. Additionally, we can analyze objects, get details on enemy weak points or gang affiliation. It might take you a while to adjust, but most times rarely the charm with anything, really. The scanner should eventually sync with your thought processes and read your intentions. <laughs> it ought to work like a charm. Now draw your weapon. You should see your ammo count in a brand new site. The subdermal weapon grip links to our scanner and shows us weapon information like ammo count and fire modes. It also so increases badass. the base damage on all. But can you actually weapons. aim down the side at a 45 degree Shit, angle? Not See, yeah, that's. Uh, I'm that wondering. Yeah, I'm wondering on that because what I'd like to see is if you're close to like a door, like if you're on the right side, does it kind of lean it over to the left and put it at like a 45 or closer to a 90, like you're gonna round that corner? Right. Go on, kid. Can Show them what you do some John Wick aiming. And once you hit the big time, don't forget where you came from. <laughs> Is all this optional, by the way? Mm hmm. All these upgrades and shit that she did that. So just buying well, some Ripper Dogs operate that entire cutscene. Others provide yep. black market services. For the right price, they can even offer to install illegal military grade cyber. Weapons. Yeah, you can see the quest objectives up in the top right. Oh, right, right, right. Left a few minutes ago. Said he'd wait outside. Well, well. Hiroshi. Mm-hmm. Well, Vig's got a soft spot for you, Heine. Come on. How about you use them fancy-ass optics to scan my new wheels? Sure. But you'll have to let me take it for a spin. Hey, just watch the paint job. I like that the dude's Mexican, but he's got like tattoos and the top knot like he's Hawaiian. Yeah. <laughs> this car is pretty fucking sweet, man. It's total Knight Rider. Hey, you got a problem? This guy looks an awful lot like one of those scavengers we took out earlier. Michael. <laughs> Tells me that wasn't no coincidence, huh? 
And you're actually driving in this. This isn't like a scripted thing. The fucking HUD on the windshield looks Jackie's badass. Jackie's car is a super-powered sports car running on Chew 2, the super fuel of the future. Players can explore Night City freely in many different cars, on bikes, and in other types of vehicles. Is that the radio playing? I fucking yeah. love it. I yep. love that. I'm getting shivers from the fucking radio. This does not look good. Now it's game oh, music. Grab the wheel, Jack! Look at this. It looks like the scavengers from earlier. Now, obviously, it's, you know, on rails. This guy would actually be able to hit shit if he wasn't playing on a controller. I think we got rid of him. That was intense. Shit! The fuck was that? See, now they do have third Night person City for driving, which I, is better than nothing. Even in daytime. Random encounters like these can look at that city, dude. How your actions directly influence your open world experience. Let's get the fuck out of here. Okay, Jackie. So, if they're done riding our asses? Scavs? Uh, sure, maybe. Should be looking for a new spot to slice and dice, not gunning after us. And these guys are a lot like, you know, like GTA. Like, if you can see it, you can go there. You know, aside from, you know, the very edge of the map, obviously, but, like, I'm interested to see how open this world is going to be. Is it going to be like normal where, you know, you can go anywhere the fuck you want, whenever you want? The agent we're going to meet represents Militech, one of the largest companies in the private military sector. Why are we stopping? a total ripoff from Dope's Debonair. Remember the Corpo off Dex's Shard? Rang her. She's in the area and we're gonna meet. Let me guess. She's in hot Corpo water. Desperate. Then you think you can use that. See if I can, yeah. Since Cyberpunk 2077 is an RPG, preparation will be key when dealing with Night City's powerful. Especially when these are Corpos. Instead of just rushing in, Let's assess the situation with our freshly installed Kiroshi optical scanner. There. Let's take a closer look. Composite armor. Car's a fucking tank. Shit. Yeah, Militech. No doubt about it. You sure you still want to meet him? Yeah. Gotta do this. But don't you move a damn muscle. Not unless I start, that is. I like he just gives the Terminator thumbs up. <laughs> I need a vacation. These guys are levels higher than we are. Let's try to approach them carefully. Stout. Take it you were the one to call? Yep. Wanted... Think you're smart? Thought you could blackmail me, bitch? Set conditions? Calm the hell down. What is I've this? I've got you now, asshole. You're insane! Who the fuck is this? I'll know in two seconds flat. That fucking thing ready? All set. Are you here alone? It's like a Corpos fucking 60 caliber pistol. Personal link and have subjected Come us on. to a kind of lie detector program. The dialogue system in Cyberpunk 2077 is fully gameplay driven. I asked if you came alone. Yep, just little old me. She's lying. Search the area. Now listen. Please. Little fucking drone know. that deploys from the car. This piece of <laughs> shit, Anthony Gilchrist. Did he or another asshole at Militech leak info to you or anyone else about a convoy? It might be tempting to reach for the gun, but the no. consequences Got could be dire. To do with him Remember, or these guys are really tough. Shit. Checks out. <laughs> you got nothing on me. Nothing. Won't we'll get away with this, you bitch. You're dead. Somebody shut him up. Take me home. Now. All right. I have no idea who you're working for. Or what What's he pointing at? But you better give me something solid or I will. Uh, 
I've got an offer. Your second head. Oh, you are stretching. <laughs> this better be fucking good. Gang goons who ripped you off. He wants proper target safety. You know, he doesn't want, want to slip. Give me the funds to buy. Even that. though I notice he's got. Again. Look at that. Look at the trigger safety. I don't give a shit about the thieves. He, he got did, his finger point. off the trigger. Yeah, he's got his finger resting on the trigger guard. Credship 50k, just enough to buy you your bot. Thing is, Chip's got to make it into the thieves' terminal. That's all I need. Think you can do that? Then we got a deal. Fine. I'm in. Try to fuck me in any way, and I'll be seeing you real soon. You're making a mistake! Well, he's not intending to shoot. That's why he has his finger on the trigger guard, not actually on the trigger. The agent that's gave a, us the money to buy the bot. It's one of those things that, like, especially movies get wrong all the time. You don't actually place your finger on the trigger unless it's fucking go time. Right, because you could just have like a, like your finger could twitch. Like yeah, triggers exactly. are really sensitive. That yeah, mean, you could like, twitch. Somebody, somebody could bump into you. You know, all kinds of things could happen. So yeah. you keep your finger off the trigger until it's fucking you ready could fucking sneeze. No signal, so I stay put. Good thing, too. Went down about like I expected. Made a deal, and we're good to meet with Maelstrom now. Mm-hmm. I love those doors. Those are so cool. Now, this is where it gets very GTA-like. What do you expect? Corpse don't forgive or forget. Even these Here's how do you so I'm assuming there's probably gonna be some kind of HUD to tell you where to go. Yeah, I would well you can see up at the top it's got the compass and then your you know, marker and stuff. Right, but how do you know where to turn and everything? How you want to do this? Even now, we can choose how to approach this quest. Do yeah, that I don't know. I would assume do we try there's got to be a mini map that they're gonna have. They probably just have it turned off, you know, just to let you see as much as possible. Would be my guess. For this demo, let's try the more diplomatic approach. Tough shit. All we need's for them to buy it. I want to talk to Royce. Main room. I'm waiting. It looks like so far from the dialogue options I've seen that they're learning, they learned a lesson from Fallout 4 in the, in the sense that the dialogue option that you pick is actually what you fucking say. Yeah. Well, that's, I mean, that's like not even necessarily something from Fallout 4. I mean, companies have been doing that for a while just fucking they messed it up with fallout 4 like mass effect did that long before and their obsession with body like these guys did um but even in witcher 3 it's pretty much the same way he says you know, they paraphrase a little bit but he says very close to what the choice is right getting creative with their gear Yes, that is very fucking annoying. It looks like they made this when they, you know, you pick a choice and he's something that's hideout. nowhere close Charmed. to what the fuck it made it out to be. Seriously? Maybe we should have taken him by surprise. A little late for regress. Like this that. is where it gets really fucking creepy now. again. Just keep moving. Stay cool. They're just trying to spook us. Remember, we've chosen to buy the tech, not steal it. Hopefully, this will go yeah, fast and easy. This is a pretty well-guarded place. You can imagine what would have happened if we'd taken the violent path. So these guys are basically, like, more machine than they are human at this point. They're, like, obsessed with body mods and what? shit. Right, they're like displacers from Bioshock. Yeah. Looking to buy a bot. Model MTOD-12. Looks like a spider. Couch planted. Dude's fucking face looks like a spider. Yo, Kerr, peek around the corner, see if we got anything like that. Fucking glowing ass red eyes are all creepy and shit. Well, shit. Sit down. I'll stand. Can't move on your culo. Makes you an easy target. Sit down. That really necessary, hombre? 
I ain't your hombre. Sit. Sit your ass down before I plant a bullet in your skull. Jack, sit down. This ain't gonna end. Shit. Well, all right, fucking bravo. Come on, lighten up. Have a whiff. Better. Slow mo, anybody? Yeah. Oh, that's what I thought when I first seen it, too. Now we can talk. I was like, wait a minute, where's Lena Headley? Or Hetty, whatever. Goodbye. Need to see it. Suit yourself. Fucking tricked out, state of the art, this thing. Don't even got no standard port. Bells and whistles, though. Dynamic camo armor and motor impulses rivaling that of the human nervous system. It's actually. I'm not sure about that camo. It actually made it easier to see. Fiber, and it can go anywhere. Literally. Watch this. Fully integrated link, too. So when the spider starts crawling up walls, dangling from ceilings, you could lose your lunch. So, what you think? Me up and let's get the fuck out of here. The buck, I'll take it. Two questions. What the fuck's going on? And who the fuck is this? So fucking creepy, dude. His whole fucking is face is like face hollowed is out. out. Yeah. yeah. And you positively reek of Militech. Dexter Deshaun sent me. Dexter Deshaun, dreads, gold plate, fat old fuck, that him? <laughs> we'll pay for the bot. Be on our way. How much you say you had? 50k? Preds on this. Gotta have the stereotypical Mexican showdown. Move it. Ooh, not the smoothest of deals, but it worked out in the end, right? Flathead's good gear. It'll do the trick. Whatever that trick is. Shit. Is that Trevor shit, shit. talking? That I don't know. Like it, do, it does kind of sound like him. I know that dude has gotten a fuck ton of voice work since GTA and also movies, so it's possible. It turns out the cred chip we got from the Militech agent contained a virus Cut which off. fried their systems. The Royce, their leader, is making Thanks a break for it. Had to end this way. Before we figure out a way to leave, Let's grab the splinter. See, I like how that scanner doesn't these dead like doesn't basically turn on night vision. It just it shows you like points of interest, but it doesn't like brighten everything up. Us to but take a closer look at is there going to be upgrades later that do basically give you night vision and shit? Because it did say the game has full day night cycle. I can imagine, or thermal, or some kind yeah. of yeah, yeah. Okay, let's equip the splint to our chipware slot. With this done, the bot will now follow us wherever we go. All right, what else do we have here? Blunderbust. Nice. Oh! Street modified tech shotgun. Yeah. Tech weapons fire rounds that penetrate. Now you're starting to understand why I said doom. They also have an alternate fire mode that allows you to power up shots and deal more damage. This thing is like a. a sh Shotgun, like there are several fucking out of this room. rail gun, like those gates, for example. However, you'd have to be a skilled net runner to hack into this terminal. Net runners are basically hackers. Right, Luckily, hackers. our engineering skills should allow us to disassemble that maintenance panel so we can get through the door. Got it. There are many skills right in the game you. that players can apply in solving problems. The engineering skill can be used to fix, disassemble, and disarm the devices blocking Production your path. Production line passes through here. And we're gonna pass through with it. So, from this point on, we're going to unlock the abilities of a high-end character to showcase some of the different mechanics we have. This, I thought, was really cool about the demo, is they unlock higher abilities just to show you, you know, shit that you're gonna be capable of doing later on in the game.
One of the new weapon modules yeah, there it is. we now look, have. Yeah, but look at that. Ricochet it was ricocheting off the fucking wall. Watch this, they do it again. This allows players to bounce bullets off walls. Oh, this is fucking insane, up. dude. This is another targeting system that will hit him through the wall. behind walls. Paired with the penetrating rounds of our tech shotgun. Did she just do like a power slice? Yeah. And blew his fucking legs off. I think her reload animation was different. See, yeah, she has different, she has different reload animations. Looks like yeah, they've got a couple of different loot. reloads. This is a smart gun. It's one of the more advanced weapons in the game. Allowing bullets to track and follow their targets. It's like a vector. One of many yeah, it definitely looks like a Chris, but it's like Weapons fucking 50 cal. That allow for deep customization and progression. Watch this thing. This way, you can be sure to find something that will suit your place. I left the crosshair is just a big box. Yeah. See how it's going through the paper and shredding it and shit? And it replay sends every shot to the same yep. location. <laughs> That's exactly what I fucking thought of. I was like, no, Dex! Yeah, this, the combat is just fucking badass. Yeah, I get, I get a, there's a big, big, big doom. A lot of doom right here, I'm getting. Yep. I like how he's out. purposely okay. taking people's legs off just to be a dick. Jesus Christ! My, my legs! Well, he... Okay, well. Our sentence probably should have been cut short there. Yeah. Just a reminder, everything you've seen and are about to see, including it's this so fucking gnarly, dude. To show you, is from a work this in progress a, version of the game and may change this is a, the like, course of development. Whether or not I ever play this oh, game, covered? this okay. is a really, Let's try really good tech demo. Oh, We're going to absolutely, man. And connect directly to his neural side. Like, they do a great job of just basically giving us a bunch of, of game sudden, porn. Like, yeah, look, this is what we can do. This is what we're capable of, you know? Through this Maelstrom gang map, we've now connected to the gang hideout's internal network. This is the building's personnel system. Let's focus on the squad. Uh, get the Maelstrom uh, can you pause it real quick, Luster? From here. You drop it in frame? Nah, I gotta fucking take care of something here real quick. Just a second. All right, well, uh, honey, uh, Gates, what do you guys think so far? It looks pretty cool. I mean, I. All right, fuckers, you know what to do. Happy birthday. Happy birthday. All right, lock it up. I hate all of you. Happy birthday, dickhead. Thank you, gentlemen. Yeah, You're all dismissed. Bye, Blue Lobster. Whoop. You put her in drums channel. All right. You trying to scar her for life? You put yeah. her in drums what, channel. What is going on? <laughs> uh, so that's a 
So in the 506, honey, there's a tradition where the first Oh, she knows. Brewer... Oh, I, okay. I know. That's okay. Remember when I said that Brewer talked to me earlier? Oh. That's what it was. Oh, this was okay. uh... <laughs> you pulled the Aaron on me. Yeah, yeah, this was all set up in advance. Uh, for you guys watching the stream, my apologies, uh, but I had to get taken care of today. As, uh, as I said at the start of the stream, today is uh, the lobster's birthday, and it is... Uh, or has been tradition since I became the first sergeant that any time it is someone's birthday in the unit, we call in all hands, and uh, I make them sit there while everyone sings happy birthday to them. So I apologize to your ears, but yeah. Uh, and yes, actually, you can blame A.A. Ron because he did remind me that today was uh, your birthday, so it's all his I fault. I told you at like one in the morning last night that it was my birthday. Yeah, I know. <laughs> and he reminded me, and I was like, "Oh yeah, I gotta fucking, I gotta try and get him into Teamspeak and get all this fucking taken care of." So I fucking at like, I don't know, noon, one o'clock or some shit like that. Uh, I called in all hands and got everybody into the conference room and said, "All right, look, this is what we're doing at fucking twenty one hundred. I want you guys to get a hold of everybody you possibly can and get them into the fucking conference room without me calling in all hands. And then I'm just going to drag everybody up there and you guys just start singing happy fucking birthday. So there you go. Yeah. Happy birthday to the lobster. It's closest we can get to a surprise birthday party without everybody flying to fucking Buffalo, which ain't going to happen. Uh, <laughs> so let's. Uh, yeah, because why would anybody ever come here for anything ever? Yes, pretty much. Yeah, don't don't I mean, come here. We have like chicken wings, <laughs> and we got pizza, and we have uh, I don't know what else do we have? Stuff. Oh, we have like. Why do people come to Buffalo? For the You're chicken the wings. One that lives well, there. I'm at, well, I'm asking her because she's the photographer. Well, well, I I I think it's mainly because we're cool as fuck. <laughs> yeah, we're super cool. So basically, uh, no we're reason. We're below zero. We're below zero. Cool. <laughs> oh, that's so cringy. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> All right, let's we... uh, let's get back into cyberpunk because basically nobody goes to Buffalo unless they have to. Yeah, unless they're like trying to get to Canada, like yeah. Randy Quaid. Yeah, they're on the run from the law. Was that where he pushed through? Was it through Buffalo? I don't know. I, maybe it Minnesota probably was. or Omaha or like or uh, or Montana or something like that. We can deploy software that affects the whole squad. For now, we'll simply unlock the ability to perform quick hacks. All right, time to show off our new high-level abilities. Little arm swords. With quick hacks, it's using Assassin's the back door we yep. unlocked a minute ago will install a virus that jams the connection between the Maelstrom Ganger and his weapon. This will prevent him from firing. This happened, you could do this in the Syndicate. Like you can make them like kill themselves and stuff. Looks like he's having a problem now. <laughs> she just, she's like a predator no. now. Right, just, a predator. just slowly turns. You might recognize these mantis blades. We can also double jump and bounce off of walls, which makes us a very agile, fast solo. Yeah, so again, a lot of the shit you're seeing right now in terms of the combat, like, this is stuff that you get later on in the game. You know, the stuff that you have to, like, work your way towards. I don't know if the double jump is one of those or not. Sweet. We just found a corporate tech rifle. Corpo weapons are top of the line. Um, has they, have they said, Brewer, like... How many, like, what, like, guns, like, like, Let's Borderlands level number of guns? Or... I have no idea. It looks like Royce is back. I would assume it's going to be a fuck ton. He's got an armored exoskeleton. We won't be able to get rid of him that easy. Especially with, like, different mods and shit are not like that. Dealing a lot of damage because he's packing an autonomous shield. Luckily, the scan we performed earlier revealed a weak spot. Attacking should bring the shield down. Now you see how the bullets aren't hitting the weak spot because he's got the wrong thing targeted. He had his body targeted and not the weak point. Right. <laughs> and then the all new ice cube system. <laughs> yeah. Now he's got the right thing targeted. Wow, this is like some Warframe level of fucking aerodynamics. Yeah. Like fucking 
air, air, uh, acrobatics and shit. Shields down. Let's Is he playing him. on a controller? Yeah. So. I don't know there, why. Are there like. Okay, so I'm assuming there's like quick dodge. Okay. There's like a quick dodge button. Let's put him down. I would think so, over. yeah. I'm assuming he's hitting like a bumper or something like that. that like, yeah, maybe. Like, that. Raid, but we've got the bot. And like I said, I'm not really sure why he's playing on a controller because uh, we know it's going to be on PC. That's who, you know, that's what CD Projekt is developing think, this for. Well, just decided if you to notice, buy like, controllers, so you know, many like, all the smooth painting so that he's possible. been doing. Yeah, it's more cinematic. It's, it's, it's really Although I did, that on controller. I should say this is also going to be on console. They did say a while back that this is going to be and developed the for next generation consoles time. and the generation after that like that's how basically rowdy this game is going to be is they're going to even the next generation is going to be needed to really unlock the full potential and the same oh, thing with the current hardware he's saying you know this is being developed to run smoothly on current gen you know top end hardware but at the same yeah. time It'll, really work you know, together more often. still you'll be able to pull more out of the it from even the, the next generation of discreet. hardware. Alright, we're talking like crisis over, level. You the game yeah, exactly. Like, this is going to push current gen Somebody shit to its absolute limits. See how this works now? Only the corp gets what it wants. Like, this is one of those you're gonna need a 1080 to play on, like, high for sure. And ten, a 1070 is gonna, like, be medium to low. To whoever's doing my dirty work for me. It's time we were on our way. I know. Okay. Let's call Dax and tell him how things went down. My girl is shit eating suits. Mama knows. Hey, Mr. Dax. Get us that table at the afterlife? Hmm, matter of fact, I did. Just in my gut and all, you know. Well, you were right to. <laughs> Well done, Lindsay. Well done. <laughs> See you there. So, did it become night on its own, or yeah, like... yeah, it's a okay. full day-night transition. It, or at least I think so. I don't know. It may have been scripted for this trailer or whatever. I don't know, but it did say that it has a full day-night cycle. Oh no! Not another three. And I would assume it's going to have weather as well. That was kind of part of Witcher was to, that it had weather in it. The weather didn't really have any effect on the gameplay, but in this it might. We finished the job. Oh, I bet, I bet like it rains, that probably looks really beginning. cool on the windshield. Oh, yeah. This concludes our gameplay demo walk. Thanks for watching. All right, guys. So, uh, yeah, there it is. Um, you can go ahead and pause it, Loster. Um... So, what are our thoughts? Who I've, uh, talked, to, I've talked enough. I could please let one of them. <laughs> I, I got plenty to say, but I, I don't want to bogart this. So, all right. Well, what do we think? Rain, fucking cope. What do you guys think of it? I like it. I think it was pretty fucking awesome. <laughs> is uh. Is it something you guys see yourself picking up kind of day one or Oh yeah, waiting? my one friend got me into this, so I'm like super excited. She would have gotten uh, Detroit day one if we had a PS4. Like, oh, yeah. Don't say that, don't. That's a trigger word, do not. <laughs> <laughs> I want that game so bad. I'm telling you, if you haven't watched Co watch uh, Co Carnage's playthrough of it, it's really, really good, his playthrough. It's about as close as you can be to playing through it yourself. Um, so what do you guys think about the, the hardware aspect of it? You know, that it's gonna, you're gonna need absolute top end shit to really be able to play this. Um, does that kind of bum any of you guys out or do you think that's kind of, uh, to be expected with this being like the new hotness of games or uh, what? Uh, I'm, I'll, I'll, I'll make my answer quick. I'm, I'm I would say that. I think it's important that every once in a while, a game comes a along. A crisis that, level game comes along. Yeah, just push everybody. Yeah, yeah, that we don't just 
Like that's what will advance because cons- PCs don't have generations the way that like you know consoles do. So like you'll you you know you can you can spot an Xbox 360 game because it looks like an Xbox 360 game. Right. You can spot a PS2 game because it looks like a PS2 game. Like it's really there there are certain tropes that you can fall into. Like you can notice like there's you know you can spot an FPS from like 2005. You know what I mean? Or you can spot an FPS from like you know 1999 because it looked like Black Hawk Down. You know, right. versus Call of Duty Four. You know what I mean? Right. Fast forward, fast forward ahead to like now, where you have fucking uh, like Destiny. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So it's like it's there, but it, it doesn't, it doesn't, it's not as um, it's very gradual in the PC world. So I think every once in a while you get a game like this. I think that's what GTA Five was. It was a game that really, really pushed your hardware to the limit. Mm-hmm. Um, Witcher Three was that one? Yeah, Witcher Three was. Uh, well, it's not exactly, I mean, it's not demanding by today's standards, but yeah, at the time, it was very demanding. Um, yeah. And they are kind of known for that. Like, they push hardware to its absolute limits. Okay. Um, and like you said, that's, in my eyes, that's a good thing. Obviously, I'm a little biased because I do have good hardware and stuff, but like you were saying, it pushes the hardware developers to improve. You know, if right. they if everybody just stuck, okay, we're gonna you know we're gonna use the Unreal Four engine for the next twenty years. Nvidia, AMD, they have no reason to increase their the power of their GPUs. You know, right. Intel has no reason to increase the power of their CPUs. You know, they it allows them to kind of stagnate in the same right. way that you know it's good when AMD started doing the Ryzen because it started, you know, it started giving Intel competition and then Intel had to drop the 7,700 and the 8,700 like back to back, like, oh shit, AMD's catching up. We got to drop these CPUs that we weren't planning on dropping for another couple of years. We got to put them out now. Same thing with the, you know, the 20 series of cards, you know, shit, we got to get these things out. AMD's catching up with these RX cards. We got to get these things out and stay on top. Uh, The same thing with game development, like guys like this pushing this current gen hardware as far as it'll go makes these hardware developers go man we gotta up our shit because otherwise right. nobody's gonna be able to play these games with our system and if we don't do it somebody else is gonna right well and like crisis is an example it might be a lone example but crisis was developed like to run on tech that didn't exist yet mm-hmm. like you couldn't play crisis maxed out when it when it came out yeah. it was it, it, you couldn't have a rig that could play Crisis maxed out with a solid frame rate when it first came out, and uh, I thought that was that like despite Crisis being kind of a shitty game, like that was a big deal. Like that was one of the benchmarks for me building my first PC. It was will it run well, Company yeah, of Heroes was, and will it run Crisis? I mean, that was a lot of people's benchmark was will it run Crisis or how well will it run Crisis? You know, that was that was a benchmark for very high end PCs like. How like how many FPS can you get in Crisis? You know, right. um, and that's when one of the interviews I watched from the uh, one of the dev interviews I watched from this. You know, that's what he was saying was that, that this game is developed with current generation hardware, but it's also developed with next generation hardware in mind. So you know, it's it is very much so like Crisis. Like you're going to need a very good system to run it, but at the same time when the next generation of hardware starts coming out, this st- this game is still going to look fucking beautiful because it's made with that next generation of shit in mind. Now, my guess would be because the first game we've seen with this RTX shit, the real-time ray tracing that NVIDIA has developed and t- has taken them a decade to develop it and so on, um, the first game that we've seen with that is the new Tomb Raider, which comes out, I think, September... I'm not positive on that, but basically at the end of this year, that game comes out. Now, Cyberpunk isn't coming out until next year at the earliest, at the absolute earliest. A lot of people are suspecting Christmas next year. So I'm guessing that this is going to have that real-time ray tracing shit implemented. Um, So the lighting and stuff like that is going to be even gnarlier, uh, provided you have a 20-series card that's capable of doing it. Obviously, if you don't have a... 20 series card you're not going to be able to do real-time ray tracing it's not possible um but yeah this this comes out christmas next year by then a lot more people will have their hands on 20 series cards and so on and so forth so 
I suspect, you know, from what we've seen here, because you asked, you know, at the start, is CD Projekt kind of known for doing the, you know, the switcheroo downgrade type shit. I would expect it's going to actually be the opposite. When this actually drops, the game is actually going to look more impressive than what we've seen here because the hardware they're currently doing this with isn't capable of pushing this game to its limits. Okay. Which, well, that to me is pretty exciting. Yeah, well for me, okay, so just a brief summary. From what I've seen, I'm very, very impressed with this. I got chills, I got excited, like, this looks awesome. I don't, I, this might be more of a game that I would maybe enjoy observing. Right, like watching maybe, more than playing. Right, like I would probably watch, you know, I'd probably watch Rain play it more than me actually playing it because it looks really cool. It was kind of the same with Doom. Um, despite my love for Doom, my ut- like my utter devotion and like just that's that's the game for me. Um, I haven't really played a lot of Doom Four or Doom Twenty Sixteen, whatever you want yeah, to call it. Yeah, the new one. Yeah, she's, same for me. Good. She, she's played it. I it's way weird more than for I me because it, it's such a drastic shift in the gameplay style, which sounds yeah. stupid because it's still you know it's always been a fast paced shooter, but with all the, like the jumping and you know craziness there and stuff, it's a it's a much different game than the yeah, Doom I'm used to, and, and I, I'm yeah. not. Like, I'm just, I'm not built for the, those kind of reactions and, you know, fucking parkouring all over the place. I just, right. I can't wrap my head around it. I, I'm, I'm, I'm accustomed to, like, circle strafing. Yeah, you exactly. You know, and, and that, that's, that's my, you know, you know, your Doom, your Painkiller, your Quake, you know, shit like that. That's, that's my, that's my, where I, that's what I grew up with. So, to play Doom, despite it being a gorgeous game, and it's really Doom at heart, it's just, like, there aren't as many enemies on the screen. And you gotta like you have to fight differently. You have to you know you still have to prioritize your enemies. And I saw some of that in in this too, in the mm-hmm. cyberpunk thing. So it all kind of does tie together. But like for me, it's just like I don't know. I, I don't like having to chain together like your 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 because you have to do like melee kills in order to regen yeah. regen your health. Like those are mechanics. I'm like no, I just wanna I just wanna turn on flip on a minigun. Right. And just rip everything in half with a minigun or a chainsaw, you know, or, or you know what I mean? It just, it well, just, well, that's feels where better. I think with this, I'm, I may have a slight problem with the combat because it is very much so like Doom. Like, you notice they kind of chain together a lot of moves and engagements yeah. and so on, which I'm not good at. Like, I just, I don't visualize that shit in my head no, like, i don't no, look I don't at a guy behind cover and like oh i can run and slide and turn and fucking blow his kneecaps out with the boomstick like no right. i look at it and say okay i'm gonna throw a frag and fucking it'll blow up behind him and kill him right. or you know wait okay for yeah wait for him to peek or okay i'm gonna peel back and circle around and flank him from the side you know i i look at it from much more of a realistic standpoint of you know cover shoot move so on the find fix flank eliminate um yeah but that's not really the style of this from what i've seen now that's yeah. not saying that's you know that's not saying all of the combat is like what we've seen you know it's i'm sure it's going to be very class dependent you know do you, do you want to do that very mobile sliding you know close in type shit do you want to do more of like a traditional assault rifle you know, fire from cover type thing? Do you want to do sniper rifle stuff? You know, however you want to do it. I would assume that's the way it's going to be. Um, but, you know, all we've seen is th- just this little bit that they've shown us so far. Yeah, and I got to hand it to, uh, to to the developers that, like, to really make that look... Because Doom, Doom did it pretty well. Like, they, they really kind of, like, streamlined the whole first person. Like, if you tr- there are some first person shooters where, like, you try to do that shit. And it just feels clunky yeah. and, and awkward, you know. Like, um, like Doom did it pretty well, where you, you're 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 agile, you're maneuverable, despite you being like this walking tank. Basically, you can still you know jump around. And in this, you know, you're you're like a slender, like a female. You're nimble. You can get around and shit like that. That's very hard to do in in first person. Um, Warframe does a pretty good job, but that's in third person. And I, I got a lot of a Warframe vibe too from that, like the jumping around and the. The, the sliding and you know the mm. shit like that so um i mean kudos honestly because that shit looks really like streamlined 
and that's hard to do in a first person shooter. Like imagine trying to do that shit in Call of Duty. You just yeah. got done playing. You got you just got done playing most of the Modern Warfare games. Like, can you imagine trying to perform any oh, of those God, actions no. in those I games? Would, I would be sick. Yeah. Um. No. I mean, personally though, that's kind of one of the downsides is, you know, that it is doing kind of that style and that it's first person. I, you know, I'm much more, I would be even more excited. No, don't get me wrong. I'm going to get this game for sure. I mean, it's, it's a done deal, but I would be even more excited if it at least had a third person option, you know, where you could hit a button and go into third person. I, that to me would be fucking amazing because we already know it's not going to be multiplayer. There's not going to be any type of multiplayer in this game. We already know that. So, you know, you can't say, oh, well, it can't have third person because of balancing or anything like that. It, there is no multiplayer. So right. there's really no reason I can see that it shouldn't have third person other than, you know, development difficulties or whatever. But they've done third person before. I mean, every Witcher game has been third person. So I'm not really sure what made them go the FPS route. Um, but either way, I'm going to end up fucking playing it. Uh, now, we also know already, despite the fact that the game's not even done, game's not out, not, a, not in early access or anything like that, we do already know that they are going to be releasing extra content for this. So, what do you guys think about that? About a game that isn't even out yet, isn't even finished in development? And they've already said, yeah, we're going to be releasing DLC for this game. I feel like that's a cash grab. Same. Well, I mean, it's a lot of content, right? I mean... Well, yeah, yeah what they have in the game... They haven't given us an actual number, like an hour's number in terms of what's in the game. Uh, but in a interview with the lead developer, I always feel like an asshole because I can't remember his name, even though he's one of my favorite people on the planet. Um, he said that f to them, based or dependent upon the style of game, to them, a $60 you know, AAA game should consist of anywhere from uh, 80 to a, or 50 to 100 hours of gameplay, dependent upon what style of game it is. So, I mean, obviously that's a big window, 50 to 100 hours, but still... 50 to 100 hours in a single player game that you know essentially doesn't have any replayability that's a flock ton of gameplay yeah i mean i wouldn't agree with that i mean the whole 50 minimum 50 hours i mean honestly like call of duty is 50 hours i wouldn't fucking play it <laughs> yeah. that's, that's some serious burnout You're, that's not that kind of you know not every well, game needs to fall under that category i think that's that, under, under um that rule. That's not like main storyline. That's like doing everything. Is oh. what he's talking. Yeah, that's not okay. like oh, you know, it takes you fifty hours to get through the main quest line. No, he's talking about the entire game. The entire game encompasses fifty to hundred hours of gameplay. Okay. But again, he was saying, you know, that's dependent upon what kind of game it is. You know, if it's not a long, you know, quest like RPG like what they're doing, you know, it could be less. But anyways, along with that interview because they what they had asked him was you know do you guys plan on doing paid dlc for this and he said yes absolutely like without hesitation so they've already got shit planned um well that's how you increase i mean honestly like that's how you you increase there's no different like we didn't used to call it dlc but yeah, like was... the first the first medal of honor on pc allied assault had two additional campaigns that you paid like 40 bucks for like you know what i mean like you you um uh, I'm, I'm, there, there's other examples, but they're escaping. Yeah, me. fucking like, expansion passes, dude. C and C, C and C was yeah. one of the very first to yeah. do, you know, quote unquote expan expansion packs or whatever. Um, you know, expansions were basically another game uh, in and of themselves. Uh, yeah, so, Starcraft is another one. Yeah, like Brood Wars was huge, and it was it was it was essentially what we would call DLC today. Yeah, so. In the, like I said, in that interview, they were asking him if he was going to do paid DLC, and he said yes, absolutely. Uh, the the kind of caveat to that was, you know, him saying that you know a full fledged sixty dollar game should have you know fifty to one hundred out in our uh, 
in our studio, he's saying a full fledged game should have 50 to 100 hours. So he was saying basically, if CD Projekt Red is doing a game, it's going to be 50 to 100 hours worth of gameplay. Um, and then he said, when it comes to DLC, if we are going to release a paid DLC, we think it should have a minimum of 20 hours worth of game that you get out of it. 20 hours for DLC. That's why, you know, Witcher 3, uh, Blood and Stone, or Heart of Stone and Blood and Wine feel like almost a whole nother game because these guys' mentality is, well, if we're going to release DLC that we're requiring someone to pay money for, we're going to give them their fucking money's worth. And for us, your money's worth is at least 20 hours. That's pretty damn cool. Now, I would assume that the reason that they're saying already, yes, we're going to have DLC, and the game's not even done yet, and people are like, well, why don't you just put it in the game? This game's already been in development for, I would assume, probably four to five years. Maybe three. Maybe and it's not even coming out until 2019 at the earliest. That's if it doesn't get delayed again, which they've already, from reports, you know, quote-unquote, delayed it from what their original idea was for release. So... I'd rather them do that, though. Yeah, I, mean, I would rather to, them get the game extent, out. Yeah, to an extent, though. I mean, because you got games that have been in, like, Dude Nukem Forever that was was being developed for like uh, yeah, but that, what, 15 years. Yeah, but that died on the table multiple times and just no work was being done on it at all. Right, right. I mean, uh, Two Human is another one, I think. Like, it just sat on the just sat on a table somewhere, mm-hmm. you know, forever, and then someone picked it up and decided to finish it. Like, it, it, I'd rather them delay it. Like, I don't, like, there's people, like, just, I know it's kind of a side note, but, like, Battlefield Five I think, has been delayed. Yeah, and that like, was actually a good move, though. Yeah, and people are like, "Oh, it's a failure." Like, no, they're no, man. they're making it better. They're so doing exactly doesn't... what a fucking game developer should do. They put out a closed beta, got feedback from that, and then did the open beta and got all of the feedback from that and said, "Okay, we've got problems one, two, three, four, and five. How long is it going to take us to fix these problems?" And their developer said, "Well, it's going to take us an extra month." Okay, let's delay yeah. the game. They yeah, didn't say, all right, let's fucking, hit. let's push it out there. Let's just get the money and we'll fix it, you know, with a patch in a few weeks after launch. Yeah. Like Star Wars. No, yeah. no, no, no. No, they, I absolutely, I agree. Like, even if I'm not super gung-ho about Battlefield, I love that they did that. They listened to their fucking fan base somewhat and said, hey, let's fucking, you know, let's fix these problems that we have. Let's address these issues and we'll delay the game now granted another reason that people think that they may have delayed the game was to push their release a little bit farther away from uh red dead which is a possibility that you know they didn't want to release so close to uh red dead like they were basically right in between red dead and the new call of duty Um, now they're closer to call of duty, which is their main competition, but they're still before call of duty. So they still kind of get to stick their dick in there a little bit and say, ha ha, we got out first. Um, (laughs) yeah. So as bad wolf said there, the official announcement of cyberpunk was may of 2012. So, and they were working on it even before then, you know, with art and shit like that. So it's been six years that they've been working on this. Um, and that's just to get to what we've seen this week. They've still got another year of development, assuming a year. Again, that's what everybody's thinking. Nothing. They haven't given us a release date or anything like that. Everybody's just assuming holiday season next year. Um, I would love to see it like summer of next year. That would be fucking great if this was the big summer game next year. Uh, we'll see. Uh, but yeah, I'm super excited for this. I'm also excited to see what the, I keep wanting to call them expansions because that's basically what they are, but what the DLC is going to look like. Uh, but I'm also, I'm curious what what's going to really be required to run this thing. You know, is is somebody with a couple of year old system, you know, if somebody that has like an i5 and say a 970 
are they going to be able to run this game decently? You know, I would assume they're probably going to have to run it on like low settings or something, but are they going to be able to run it? That's really what I'm kind of curious about. Um, I'm also curious as to how, uh, what am I looking for here? How, uh, how streamer friendly is it going to be? Is it going to look as good for you guys on the stream as it does for us? Or is compression from, you know, Twitch, YouTube, whatever, is that really going to fuck it kind of like it does with Arma and cause a lot of pixelation? I would assume not because these guys are smart. They know, you know, that Twitch and YouTube is now what really drives game sales. You know, so I would assume that they're, they have all of that in mind. Uh, but I'm still interested to see what it's going to look like. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, what do you guys think in terms of, uh, in terms of like release is you guys think this is going to be the, you know, the big holiday game next year? What do you guys think? Yeah, it does. Yeah, I'd say so. You, you think so, Cope? It'll be the yeah. holiday game next yeah. year? Yeah, I think so. Um, I, sorry, go ahead. No, I will, it's, it'll be interesting to say the least, um, because when, like when Fallout 4 dropped, like that oh, it was massive. It, it was. And wait I, till the multiplayer. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Right. 76. Yeah. Rust um, Fallout version. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, when that that kind of like spawned this whole you know the same thing with Skyrim Bethesda games have a history of doing that where every every time another game releases this whole new gener this whole new wave of fans like become like that's why everyone talks about they have they love had their favorites everyone loves Oblivion or Skyrim or mm -hmm. whatever the other one was before. Well, a big know. part of that too, and one of the reasons Bethesda is fucking genius is because they don't put out a game every fucking year. You know, they allow that hype to build. Yeah. You know, they sit yeah. back. They put out, you know, they'll put out a fucking Elder Scrolls game. And then, you know, two years later, they'll put out a Fallout game. And then yeah. two years after that, they'll put out another Elder Scrolls game. So everybody that was a fan of Elder Scrolls, you've had four fucking years to sit back and wait. And even that, it's longer than that most of the time. But, you know, just as an example, like they alternate back and forth and they don't put out a game year after year after year to the point that it becomes stagnant. Right. I guess uh, what I, if if it if it can if it can captivate like the internet the way that like Bethesda games do, I think that yeah it might it might have some like serious longevity or like it it has to really like there has to be a couple of YouTubers or streamers that can really really like really put it out there. Oh yeah. To, uh, well, I to, know that. Guys like Co, you know, Dan's Gaming, guys like that are going to be the big proponents of this game. Obviously, you know, guys like Lyric and Summit and stuff, all the big guys are going to get free copies and they're going to play it for a little bit. But it's going to be guys like Co that do full 100% fucking playthroughs. You know, they're playing it every single day for six, eight hours every day. They're going to be the ones that really fucking sell this. Yeah. Um and I might be overstating the case. Uh, I might have to eat my own words here because I just looked just to see like where Fallout 4 stands versus where like to see which one is more popular, right? Witcher 3, Fallout 4, right? Mm -hmm. uh, Fallout 4 has about 86,000 reviews on Steam. Uh, Witcher 3 has almost 150,000 reviews on Steam. So clearly more people are taking the time to... Oh, Yeah. Well, I didn't realize that. I didn't realize how popular that game actually was. Or oh, yeah. The the game is insanely popular, and CD Projekt are, like, the darlings of game developers. Like, everybody loves them right now, aside from, you know, a bunch of fucking people getting up in arms about, you know, one of the guys making a tweet that was a fucking joke about assuming someone's gender, and, of course, everybody flipped the fuck out, and most of us that are actual gamers are sitting back going, dude, it was a fucking joke. Like unbutton your fucking panties a little bit there hot rod like settle down <laughs> um 
Um, What's the word on a snowflake? Oh yeah, snowflakes. <laughs> it triggered. He, they weren't even a snowflake. They were a full on fucking snowman. Or fucking woman, sorry. I don't want to assume anyone's gender either. <laughs> Jesus Christ. Uh, my only concern is that the game gets overhyped. Now, again, with their reputation of being as good as they are, it's not a huge concern. Uh, but it is a little worrisome how massive the you know the swell is getting for this game like i said you know when they fucking there were a hundred thousand people watching fucking white code on a black screen just sitting there waiting for this to come up nobody had any idea that this gameplay trailer or whatever was going to show up everybody was just sitting there watching the code like okay they're gonna show us something they're gonna show us something nine hours later they finally did and then as soon as they hit that, I mean, it was like half a million people between all the channels watching this gameplay. Uh, so it's, I mean, it's obviously very fucking popular, but it's one of those, like, Fallout 4 was incredibly popular. Like, you, you know, when that game launched, everybody was playing that fucking game. And yeah. now the attitude on that game has turned pretty sour. Uh, a lot of people were disappointed with Bethesda with the, because of that game. Uh, and I don't want to see that happen to CD Projekt. I don't think it will, but I'm just kind of... I'm cautious because I'm worried that that could end up happening. Basically, I, I, I'm of the opinion that um, if that game can spawn like a plethora of memes, it'll last for a long time. Because there's plenty of Witcher 3 memes out there. Yeah, true. Plenty of Witcher 3 gifts of uh, you uh, having gay sex and shit like that, and everyone's like, what? Yeah. <laughs> well, uh, I'm going to have to go. I have to cook dinner. <laughs> all Lobster's getting his birthday dinner. Uh-huh. <laughs> all right, well, thank you for joining us. I know uh, once this comes out, I'm sure we'll uh, we'll be chatting like total oh, yeah, fucking definitely. nerdage. <laughs> Probably Assassin's Creed as well, and Division. Well, we and actually just an found... Anthem. An Anthem. Yeah, yeah an anthem. anthem. Oh, God. Uh, but we did just find out that Assassin's Creed is going to be taking another year break. Yeah, i seen that. Which I'm very fucking happy about. It's like, they thank you. To, seriously. <laughs> like, they finally realized, oh, all we did was take Alexandria from Origins and fucking port it into a game of all Alexandria. Man, we kind of fucked up. Maybe we should take another year off. Good idea, boys. Yeah. <laughs> All right, Rain. Have a good night. Uh, try not to kill lobster unless you, you know, want to. Um, so my question, though, here real quick, since we kind of, I guess, very recently brought this up, but this question popped in my head a little bit ago. Lobster, you're fairly excited for the new Battlefield, correct? Yeah, I, I want to play it. Um, I just, I, there's something, something makes me want, I, I have a kind of a soft spot in my heart for Battlefield, which is weird because I don't really have a big history of Battlefield. I completely missed Battlefield 2 because I didn't have a PC when it came out. Um, I played 1942. I didn't play it online. I just played 1942, like single player. Mm -hmm. Um, I liked that a lot. That was a lot of fun. I just kept like, like I just kept recreating like the opening scene from Saving Private Ryan. <laughs> Like, I just kept doing that over and over and over again right. when I was a kid. No. Um, but, go ahead. Well, I was, I was just going to ask, uh, Cope, what about you? I mean, are you excited for it? Because I know you play Battlefield 1. Um, are you excited for Battlefield 5 at all? Hell yeah, I'm going to get it the day it comes out. But I've bought yeah. all of them uh, since, uh, I think, the original Bad Company. Yeah, see, I, I played a lot of Bad Company too. That was my, that was the shit for me. I fucking love that game. I latched on to Bad Company 2 and Bad Company 2 Vietnam. It was really, really, really good. Um, I, I bought three the day it released. I bought four the day it released. And then I bought one, um, I don't know. It was on sale. I bought one. And uh, I, I play them a decent amount. And I, part, I want to love them. I really do. It's just, there's something about, there's something about Battlefield that's just, I don't have fun like in the long run. Like I, I get frustrated because 
I don't, maybe, maybe it's the same mentality that you have, Brewer, where, like, I don't want to play first-person shooters the way that you have to play them to be good at these games. Mm-hmm. Like, I don't feel, I don't like doing that. I don't like, it, it just feels weird to me. I don't enjoy right. it. I like to use tactics, not fucking spam the respawn button. Right. Well, because I've never been uh, like a huge fan of the Battlefield series or anything like that. I think uh, it was Battlefield 3 or Battlefield 4 that I played the fucking campaign in, um, which was good. I mean, it was a fun campaign to play through, but I've three, never... Three is the one that was Generation Kill, and then four is the one with Omar from The Wire. Okay, so it was four, because yeah, I remember Omar being in it, because I remember seeing him, I was like, oh shit! Uh, so... Like I said, I've never been a huge fan of the series. You guys are, you know, much bigger fans than I am. What would you guys think if Battlefield said, you know what, fuck it, we're going to take a year off and to work on the next game? We're not going to do an annual release for 2019. We're not going to release the next Battlefield until 2020 because we want extra time to work on it. What would you guys think? I'd be all right with that. Loster's yeah, so pissed same. off, he doesn't same. even want to say anything. So you'd be all right with it as well, Loster? Yeah, absolutely. Absolutely. See, my... My thought is, is this. The, the Battlefield and Call of Duty are in, you know, the perpetual fucking war of going back and forth and so on, and both of them doing annual releases and so on and so forth. Because, you know, basically the the money guys look at it and say, well, if we don't release a game and Call of Duty does, they're going to get all the money that we don't because nobody's going to buy a Battlefield game if we don't put one out. So everybody's going to buy Call of Duty, which would, I'm sure, happen. However, I would wonder, I would like to see some type of uh, poll of how many guys buy are what the percentage of people that buy both the battlefield and the call of duty game every year because to me it seems like they're looking at it like well if we put out a game they're only going to buy our game they're not going to buy call of duty as well so those are our customers we're the only ones getting that money call of duty is not getting any of our our customers money so if we put out a game that's taking money away from them or you know that's extra money that we're getting as we're i think vast fucking majority of people that buy the Battlefield series are also buying Call of Duty every year. So what's to say they couldn't take a year off and work on a truly original Battlefield game and come up with something you know reminiscent of what Battlefield 1942 was, you know, something completely game-changing and release it you know on an off year or you know the year after they didn't do a game and maybe they do double the numbers that they were going to do before, that they would have done with an annual release or maybe triple or maybe they end up doing less you never know but it seems like it would be worth a shot it worked fucking great for assassin's creed i mean you look they took a year off they came out with origins origins is Boom, instantly the best-selling Assassin's Creed game in history. Ubisoft's highest-selling game at all of all time. Like, it fucking performed amazingly for Ubisoft. And then they instantly, you know, announced the annual, okay, here's the next Assassin's Creed. And a fuck ton of people are like, dude, no, why? Like, this looks exactly like the last game. This is no different. This is exactly what you guys have been doing for years and why everybody has been so pissed off. And they realized their fuck up and said, mm, damn, yep, we did it again. All right, well, after this one, we're going to take a year off again to work on the next one. Um, I mean, me personally, if I was a fucking, if I was sitting over Dice, I'd be, I think I'd be wanting to take a fucking page out of their book. And say, hey, could we, you know, get even more sales if we took a year off? Right, and just made something that was, I don't, like, what people really want like just you know we're like you know obviously losses you know if you're losing money that's bad but there's no reason why 
you couldn't make something else in the in the interim, you know? Like you don't have like you're not you don't have to like work exclusively as just crank out battlefield games, yeah. you know? Like you just take take a team. Like this is that's the thing is there's no no one wants to like take risks anymore. Like no one they just don't. Like Dice will never just take a team or EA will never just take a small team. Um well, I mean, what about like uh what was that uh, co-op game? No way out or whatever the fuck it was. Yeah. What was that two player? Like that was away, like a I think it was a way out or something a way like out. that. Yeah. yeah, like That was that EA. Needs to happen. Yeah, that like that needs to happen more. Like just just take a little team, make a little something to like keep people occupied while you're making the big games that like everyone, you know what I mean? Like Yeah, and that game sold really fucking well. Yeah. Even for like, even even considering the fact that they gave away a free copy with every one that they sold, they still far surpassed the numbers that they were expecting yeah and it's like vote like people like people don't i don't know how to explain it other than like you need to vote with your wallets and if people bitch and moan like me personally i'm not gonna buy it like i'll play a madden game but i'm not gonna buy madden every year why would i why why would i buy madden every fucking year when it's like it's the same game like every there's little tweaks and, here and there yeah that's like the thing though is, those little tweaks like, do make a difference me personally i don't give a shit i don't play any of the sports games none of the madden none of the 2k yeah. games or anything like that but i do watch gold glove do his mlb playthrough every year i know heckman plays uh fucking nba, NBA. every year um yeah. and just from talking like especially from talking to heckman and you know hearing as someone who does play it every year, hearing how big of a difference those subtle changes make, I can understand how someone would want to, you know, buy the new one every year. Because at the end, at the end of the day, it's a sports game. You know, it's basketball, it's football, it's soccer, you know, whatever. It's the same game that we've been playing for decades. Yeah. You're not going to change the game itself. Right. So right. it's it's kind of to be expected that it's just a reskin with better visuals and better options as to where, you know, especially like a first person shooter, there's a lot of different fucking paths to go down. You know, even if it's straight up like Battlefield or Call of Duty, you know, where it's primarily based upon war, there's a lot of different kinds of fucking war out there. You know, there's a lot of eras of combat, so on and so forth. There's a lot of th- different paths that they could choose and they have not gone through all of them yeah yet. not even close they've if anything they've stagnated like especially call of duty like with mm. black like black ops is vietnam black ops 2 was like half vietnam half futuristic black ops 3 is future black ops 4 is future same thing with modern warfare they're all the same you know and it's like uh there's a lot i think there's a lot of untapped like you know there's other parts of i uh, was yeah but, I was surprised with Call of Duty because, you know, when they did, when they announced World War II, everybody was super excited for it because everybody was fed up with the, you know, future warfare type shit. Uh, So people were hugely excited for World War II. World War II hit, and I believe it was the the best launch for a Call of Duty game. I believe, don't quote me on that. But I do know it was very fucking popular. Obviously, I had my issues with it, but, you know, for the normal crowd it was very very fucking popular and then the next one comes out and they go right back to the futuristic warfare the same thing that everybody was bitching about like dude we're tired of the you know the wall riding and the double jumping and shit like that and yes this one doesn't have fucking wall riding but it's still got a bunch of crazy futuristic shit and it's like but why would you go right back to that style like i aside from some of the visuals, maybe, well, not even really the visuals, but I personally, if you were to show me a video with no no markings or anything in terms of which one it is, I could not tell you the difference between Call of Duty Black Ops 4 and Infinite Warfare. Like, I, I there's no way I could tell you the difference between the two of them, aside from the wall running. It's, other than that, they look like the exact same fucking game. To yeah, me. I can't tell either. I, I was... Curious, like, why wouldn't they go with Vietnam? Why wouldn't you kick Battlefield right in the dick when that's one of their most popular series ever, being the Bad Company series? Why would you not go Vietnam and say, hey, we can do Vietnam too? Well, they did Vietnam. 
That's what Black Ops was, the first one. Yeah, but it wasn't... It wasn't really... like yeah. was only, the Vietnam was only like a little part of the game. Like, it was a little chunk of the campaign, that, you know, because there's other... There's like Russia and fucking... I think you go to China at some point. And, yeah, uh, like the closest thing they got to Vietnam was recreating the fucking Russian roulette scene from Deer Hunter. The, oh, yeah, and you the... And the boat, the boat, what, the river boat, the yeah, the, the PT water, boat, the PT boat, yeah. The um, fucking, <laughs> give me shelter plan. Yeah, but yeah, I don't, I don't understand why they didn't try out Vietnam. You know, I, I think it could have worked. Um, but yet, to I don't, I don't know how the fuck we ended up talking about goddamn Call of Duty and Battlefield. Uh, <laughs> to get back to fucking cyberpunk. Yeah. Uh, Obviously, you know, I'm very impressed by the trailer. Um, I mean, to me, even if you're not into RPGs or anything like that, it's still fucking impressive. Like, just just what they yeah. showed in terms of capability of the game and, you know, the... the uh, oh, what's the word I'm looking for? Um, the environment, you know, that they're capable of rendering and so on. It's fucking yeah. impressive, you know? Uh like you the, said, the universe I, that they're creating. Yeah, and like you said, I think it's going to be one of those games where, even if you don't want to play it, I think it'll still be really fucking enjoyable to watch someone yeah, play it. I would absolutely watch. Like, like me, not I'm I'm not an RPG guy. Like I I've, I've tried, I've sincerely tried to play. Uh, I think I tried Mass Effect. I've tried. Um, um, uh, I'm trying to think. There you are did, you like, didn't care you know, for RPG. Mass Effect. Not really. I, I played the first Mass Effect. I did the first mission where you're on oh, Mars or whatever. Yeah. See, I would. And then, like, I did. I went. You, you go. To, you go to Mars. You do some combat. I like that. And then you go through the capital city. You talk to some people. That was fine. And then I was like in space, and it's like you can go wherever you want. I'm like. Oh, so that um, was Mass Effect Three. That you're. No, it was the about. first one. Like, oh yeah, the get, first one. Yeah, it is. You are much. Like, and the... I landed on. I landed on some moon or like some like barren planet with like my. My 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 roamer my rover, and I was just driving around and I like yeah, crashed hammer the building, and I'm like, I don't like this really. See, anymore. I th I think you would enjoy Mass Effect Three more so because Mass Effect Three is the the gameplay of it is hands down the best of the series. A lot of people had problems with the ending of the story, whatever. I don't give a fuck. Uh, but the gameplay of it is outstanding. The combat sure. is. The cover-based combat in that is very, very uh, close to the division. Like you can see how the division was influenced by Mass Effect Three in terms of their cover-based combat. It's a lot like it, uh, and I love the fucking gameplay from Mass Effect Three. Uh, yeah, exactly. Like Caldwell said, it's some of the best combat in any RPG. Well, um, the other thing is that like those other like genuine, like um, like Diablo was fun. But long term, I, I my, Rain and I played it for a long time, like a long time. But I just couldn't. I just got bored. We we play, We tried playing Paths of Exile. We played that for like maybe twenty hours, and I'm just like, I don't want to. I don't really care yeah, anymore about. That's, you know what I mean? Yeah. We did the, I, like I watched you. I watched you and Drum do when you did your streams for Divinity, and I was like, okay, this looks cool, but it's still an RPG. I still have to worry about like. You know, you know what number. The only exceptions that I make is like Dark Souls, is because, and that's the only because I, I, I get more satisfaction from the combat in Dark right. Souls. Like See, I'm, Divinity, I, I'm, Divinity for me, and we're actually getting ready to play through that again because the update for it just dropped today. Um, Divinity for me, like I won't play it by myself. I tried playing it by myself, and I just get bored. It, it is quite boring, especially. I do like that it's turn-based because I can, you know, kick back and smoke a cigarette and kind of hang out. But Divinity for me was more so because it was four-player co-op. And that's what was fun about it was, you know, playing with three other people and us just hanging out bullshitting and, you know, talking shit to each other while we're doing combat. Um, but, yeah, as a single player, no, there's not enough action there. Uh even like with Diablo, like you said, it gets very boring. That's why I only play Diablo, you know, when a new season drops. I'll play it for a month or two, and then I get bored of it, and I don't play it anymore. Uh, yeah. But, you know, this, being cyberpunk, um, I 
you know, of course, there's going to be a lot of similar similarities between this and Witcher, you know, same developer and everything. But Witcher is one of those games that I'll go through and I'll play all the way through it once a year or so. I'll go through and play all the way through from start to finish, including the DLCs, because it's just that goddamn good. Yeah. You might be onto something, by the way, with your Call of Duty streams. I thought that was really interesting that you just decided to do that. Um, we haven't discussed this on the podcast, but I thought that was really cool that I was just sitting I was just sitting on my computer one day and literally War Games Inc. is now playing Call of Duty 4. I'm like, <laughs> what the fuck? So I'm like, I gotta watch. And I watched you play for like several hours. It's just, it's just, I, I'm, I'm tempted to do something similar to that. It was, just I mean, it was fun. Game. It, it pissed me off, you know, because of the AI and like knowing how good things can be, be you know, playing Arma and, you know, playing with actual yeah. other people and so on. Uh, but it was fun for sure. Uh, and that was some of the longest streams that I have done. Uh, and then I was going to play through, what was it, Modern Warfare 3 or whatever that kept fucking killing my OBS for whatever weird reason. Um, but yeah, I've thought about doing other kind of throwback games like that, but I'm just yeah. I'm not really sure what I've, to play. I've, like, teetered on, like, Brothers in Arms, like, because that's, that's a huge, huge part of the, what I am today I, as, I just, as a gamer. I just watched uh, the other day, I watched the gamers thing you know on the rise and fall of brothers in arms again yeah. uh, i've yeah, seen yeah, it yeah. multiple times and i watched that again and i was like oh this makes me so fucking reminiscent man i kept i kept looking for like maybe they'll, maybe they'll use my footage somewhere and i could <laughs> never because i have a, my my brother my hell's highway videos are i think if you look up hell's highway on youtube like my i'm on the front page i think yeah like that and uh medal of honor like those are the two that i watched the other day um, and what I thought about oh Silent Hill oh my God there's Silent oh Silent Hill, Hill. dude yeah that was oh. really really good I got the feels at the end of that video because yeah. they talked about like it's just never it's just not gonna yeah, happen it's you know? just never gonna come back um, but the the other one I was thinking about doing was uh, the Medal of Honor Warfighter I think was the name of it um, I thought about doing that one possibly. Um, I don't know, though, because it's only like a three, four hour campaign and it's like, eh, I don't know if I want to drop fucking 20 bucks or whatever to play a three, four hour campaign, you know? Yeah. Um, all right. So we're kind of at that two hour mark and I know you got to go eat supper got, here. soon. I got supper. Yeah. That's yeah. Right. Um, goddamn right. You better call it supper. I, fucking I chicken gonna, biscuits and yeah. gravy and shit. I am. I, I am going to do, uh, um. I'm gonna probably do like a birthday stream because I don't have to go to be to work tomorrow until like 2 p.m. so I can stay up late. Oh shit! So I I'm, I I don't know yet. I I just got two point hospital. Um, I wanted to talk about that, but we'll talk about it next time. Um, yeah, let's do some. You know, get some time into it and kind of yeah. get some thoughts on it. We'll uh, we'll talk about that next week. But yeah, I'm definitely gonna I'm gonna eat supper and. Uh, have a cigarette, and uh, I think I'll stream. I'll probably stream some Two Point Hospital, or maybe GTA, or fuck it, maybe I'll play an old game. Who knows? I'm just gonna—it's just gonna be just a really relaxed, relax, just a really chill stream where I'm just hanging out, playing a game for my birthday. Um, all right, and, uh, Cope, what do you got going on? You—you you, uh, streaming anything tonight? Since obviously you're not at work. Uh, yeah, I'll probably uh play some more Warframe later. I gotta eat some food. All right, well, there you guys go. Uh. Cope and Lobster are going to be streaming tonight. I'm personally not. I'm just doing the podcast tonight. Uh, tomorrow, uh, nothing going on per se. I got a birthday party to go to uh, tomorrow at 1600, uh, my nephew's birthday party. So I'll be hitting that. And then I don't That's know. That's code we'll... for me, by the way. I'm his nephew. <laughs> yeah. uh, well, unless you're, <laughs> unless you're turning uh, one, no. Um, <laughs> no, actually, it's possible. You guys do kind of act a lot alike in many ways. Um, <laughs> we should bullshit ourselves. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and just talking gibberish. Um, so yeah, I got that tomorrow at like 1600. Um, maybe we'll do like a Warcraft stream or something when I get home. I don't know. Um, and then Sunday, obviously, we got a Task Force Alpha's operation. Uh, I did uh, end up joining a raiding guild in Warcraft. I'm not real sure about them yet. We'll see. Um, I don't know. There's 
there's already a little level of kind of retard like and not necessarily retardation just, like, just kind of oh, i don't know about these guys general you know? yeah just kind of general not jiving with them uh just kind of immaturity i mean there are yeah, yeah there's yeah. quite a few younger guys in there to be expected and one guy like they use discord for all their communications which is fine you know whatever but like one dude's on voice activation and you're just non-stop hearing his fucking tv in the background to the oh, point no, that i finally that, like i finally had to speak up and i was like look i'm not trying to be a dick but you need to either turn up the threshold on your mic or shut your fucking tv off because i ain't listening to this shit all night and he was like uh i don't know how to do that so I walked him through how to fucking turn up the threshold on his microphone. And this guy was like, I don't know, he was like one of their core raiders or some shit like that was, you know, what he was labeled as in the roster. And I'm like, dude, if this guy is a core raider and his audio is that fumble fucked, like, I don't know. So we'll we'll see if that ends up working out. They yeah. they play the game well, but yeah. Uh, anyways, they're, the first raid day is Tuesday. Uh, Tuesday, the first raids open up, uh, so I've been in the process of getting geared and ready for that and shit, so probably Tuesday evening uh, we'll end up streaming that well, I guess potentially, we'll see um, yeah but that's it uh, for tonight I appreciate you guys hanging out and uh, the lobster and cope hanging out as well uh and hopefully you guys enjoyed don't forget if uh if you didn't miss any of the podcast and want to be able to see it later on uh check out the patreon link down below and uh yeah thank you guys for hanging out and i will see you all later <laughs>